hello. Hello there. Oh, hello. Hi. Oh, hello there. Howdy, y'all. Oh my god, Rachel, you're so loud. Oh <laughs> no, you're fine, you're fine. <sighs> How's everyone feeling? I know it's been um, a week and a day, and just there's there's a lot happening. I... I am struggling as both wrestling and and Dungeons and Dragons are kind of falling apart at the same time. Oh <laughs> yeah, what, right. Wrestling tea. Uh, just madness with like, is Vince McMahon gonna sell the WWE? I'm not as interested in that. To be real, <laughs> it's just really fun. I'm as interested in that as I am like the dying ship of Twitter. Um. But it's just kind of like, oh, cool. On my bingo card, didn't have these. <laughs> oh, well, here we are. <laughs> oh. Madness. How about you, Erica? Um, I'm fine. You know, I would I say it's like I'm living the dream. Don't know what type of dream it is. Could be a nightmare. Could be a good dream. Not quite sure. Could be sleepwalking. Oh man, I've had these metaphysical questions before. <laughs> We're getting deep. We're getting deep. Um, yeah. So I think the first thing before we get into the chaos that is chaos, ladies, um, is just sort of you know addressing some of the implications around the OGL and around D and D and all that shit because um, we haven't. We've talked about it. We haven't really talked about it in the channel. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I guess I'll I'll start. And if you if there are things in there that I've forgotten, Ben and Zeki, please feel free to to chime in. Um, but essentially, so right now, Chaos Ladies is in five E, uh, as is our core campaign. For Chaos Ladies, there are probably three ish sessions left to sort of close out what it is that Zeki is is doing here. Um, so we're going to finish those out. We're not purchasing any additional. D&D content. Um, we're not like spending any money. We're just going to finish out with what we have, uh, close out the story in the system that we started it in. Um, in terms of what is coming up on the channel, luckily we had already, when we started this channel, we knew we didn't want to be a D&D only channel. The problem was that that was the system that we all knew. Uh, and w with everything else going on, it was just the easiest thing for us to, to run games. And it was what, you know, we all bonded over what brought us together. There's a lot of history there. Um, it was our common, if you will. It was our common. Um, and so we already had plans in the works, like way prior to this happening. We have a, a PBTA game that's going to be run on Wednesdays. Uh, we have a game being run in the daylight system that's going to be on Wednesdays. We're going to have a Pathfinder, two Pathfinder games, actually, that were already in the works. So we... That sort of already aligns with the direction that the channel was going anyway. Um, the only big question mark we have, and this is just us being fully transparent with you, is we don't know what's going to happen with the core campaign. Um, we planned it for 5e. Um, we don't really know. I mean, we know we're going to keep going. We just don't know what system we are going to keep going in. So for the time being, it's going to be D&D for the next couple weeks as this stuff sort of gets figured out and you know maybe we get a statement if we don't get what the fuck ever um but just that's that's us being fully transparent with where we are at uh especially because this is something that we do alongside our full-time jobs so being able to just pivot really quickly and be like all right like let's spin this all up into a new system when we are working from you know nine to five or nine to six and then popping down in front of the computer and being like all right let's go it's time um it, it's a bit more of a process, um, but we are very aware of everything going on. We are not chill with it, uh, and we are already kind of moving in the direction of different systems. So whatever's going to happen with the core campaign, we will figure that out as we go. Um, anything else that either of you wanted to, to say before we kind of get into it? Uh, I don't think there's anything major that I want to discuss about this topic other than we will be reviewing all documents that come out officially uh, while there are leaks that have been happening. We can't really, you know, confirm that they're official other than that some people got them early and that's what everybody saw. 
the fact that there hasn't been anything official indicates to us as a group that they were legitimate uh, at least those first leaked documents i can't speak for anything else that's been coming out in the rumor mill uh and because of that we're going to just you know play it as a fluid situation uh but we're preparing ourselves for pretty much everything that could happen here yeah and on that incredibly positive and pleasant note uh ben do you want to say anything before you get the fuck out of here to go do whatever it is you've got to do yeah i mean I, you know the thing that i i want to to acknowledge just very quickly and then i'll let you guys do your fun stuff um is you know when you when you uh write or you begin to develop a setting with a specific uh system in mind that that shift does take time and even beyond that um i have only ever dm'd in fifth edition uh so you know like even even beyond just like mechanically how do you change all these things that are sort of already extant and have been already written down it's like for me to learn a new system and and turn around really quickly with with an update to our you know sort of like central campaign it's just like a tough thing to do um but i think you know like with with uh you know the the statement from paizo and keeping an eye on that uh, and the potential to just try to switch to a more like system agnostic way of playing. Um, you know, it, it's, it is front of mind. It is something that we will absolutely be taking into account. Um, especially if this is, you know, something that if, you know, the people are like, I'd like to play in Mitra, which would be, you know, wild because it came out of my brain and that's weird to me to think that people might actually want to do that. Maybe, I don't know. Um, like, our brain. <laughs> uh, you know, just want to like be cognizant of it and let you guys know that we are thinking about it. It is a thing that we'll, we'll be taking steps towards. Um, and, you know, just sort of like bear with <laughs> us as we figure out what the hell's going on. That's all. Thanks for popping in, Ben. Thanks yeah, for having fun. me, guys. <laughs> uh, get the hell out of here. Yeah, okay. Off. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right. Housekeeping is done. So what are we doing tonight, Zeki? Well, I think uh, we are playing some Dungeons and Dragons for the time being. First off, uh, let me before we get any further, Epic Beard, thank you for the subscription. It is mucho apreciado and or I don't I don't speak Spanish, I'm sorry, but like <laughs> it is greatly appreciated and we love it. Love to see it. Appreciate it very much. Um, but we're playing Dungeons and Dragons, if I remember correctly. And specifically, y'all are on the Astral Sea again. How does it feel to be back in space? I just have say, severe oh. whiplash. That, that's all. I just have severe whiplash. <laughs> I was just going to say you were very close to saying that correctly in Spanish. Was I? Yeah. Damn it. We oui. instead of mucho. Oh, okay. Muy apreciado. I will remember that because I try to use that phrase often enough. So I should actually learn how to say it properly. That would be, you know, the logical it thing. It was close. It was close. It was close. But back to gaming things. We were playing in the Astral Sea, if I remember correctly. Uh, is there anything that sticks out in your memories from the last session that we had? I remember that I learned that if you say I'm traumatized, you can get away with anything. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we will see. That's what Denise learned last session. <laughs> Trauma is an excuse for her all behavior. She is uh, learning healthy life lessons on the Astral Sea. <laughs> Oof, do we say? Uh, Mag learned that uh, her favorite uh, ship chef, Margaret, is fine and alive, and and her and is riding on the on the same vehicle as we are. It's great times. It's true. Uh, Margaret made it. It must have been that last and final call to the ether that you gave uh, before getting off the ship yourselves. Uh, so you can really thank Mag for that, like a thousand percent. Otherwise, 
No more. No more Margaret. And that wouldn't be fine. That would have broken my little gnomish heart. Exactly. And uh, you met the Joker? Or you finished talking <laughs> with the Joker? Right. You had some very confusing conversation with the Joker. Mm-hmm. I stole Maybe there. You definitely stole his gun, his shotgun. <laughs> Uh, I don't know where you're hiding it, but you have it. Well, I, I don't have it anymore because his brother took it from me. Right. That is true. You did give it up. I was peer pressured into giving it up. Well, you gave it up I'm as proof that you it. actually talked to him. What was his brother's name, by the way? I can't remember. Off Heath? My head. Wait, Heath, right? Heath, that is I right. I believe it was Heath. Yeah. We were making Joker references, and that is <laughs> where that came from. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and Heath was like a much nicer fellow. Oh yeah. And oh, and Mag was know. nerding out about the construction of these two. I believe they were a warforged. They were a warforged that you like, but of a type of warforged that you have never seen before. Yeah. God, because Mag. I mean, you, yeah, you've seen them on the material plane. You know, they've been a thing now for quite a while from where you come from uh but never ones this advanced and ones that look like this so that was kind of a cool thing and uh the three of you then also took some potions yeah uh i believe that uh, we were asked if uh if we were inherently magical and uh valda said no and took a potion and got extra magic so then i also said no and took a potion and got extra magic despite being very very magical <laughs> yeah but i mean it was it was offered and you took it I these did. are your choices oh yeah and mag so, took one for waste not whatnot. not yeah exactly exactly so you all picked up the like magic initiate feed i believe as well yep, uh, i did i, I can cast I fireball now <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. That is how that works. The magic initiative feat gives you three cantrips from your chosen class, and I can cast Firebolt now. I thought it was oh, two fire cantrips. Bolt. And uh, is it three cantrips or two cantrips in a first level? Oh, it's two cantrips in a first it's level. It's two cantrips in a first oh, level. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's why I was like, Fireball's a level three no, spell. There's bolt. no way you bolt. have Fireball. <laughs> I didn't yeah. miscalculate that badly. Firebolt and Magic <laughs> Missile now are the two spells that I... Oh, and fun. Something else. Uh, oh, and friends. I can also cast friends. Those are all very Denis spells. That's what I thought. Um, but yeah, and then we, we took off in our various spell jam and sea creatures. I know I was in an otter and I cannot remember what the other two of you were in. I was in uh, an umbrella jellyfish. <laughs> That is true. And I was in a nudibranch. And what is that exactly for those unfamiliar? It's like a sea slug. <laughs> and what They're does really... yours look like specifically? Um. So Erica wants it to be a sea bunny. A sea bunny one? Okay, I will actually try to find that. Art really I fast. don't know if that's <laughs> I feel like that's something that would be funny if it was for Valda, but not really like Valda's jam at the same time, but Erica wants it. <laughs> that's what we're trying to do here. So <laughs> I will find a suitable image for you because I think that's hilarious. And it actually works out really, really well that you pick this one. Because there's different species of these creatures. Correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a general encompassing term. Yeah. But these are basically sea bunnies, is what I'm seeing. They're also like... There's some really fancy ones. There are. I like the one that looks like a sea dragon, I think is what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> we are 17 minutes into stream and still figuring out what our spell jammers look like. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we're getting, I don't think we got like super crazy in depth details before. So I feel like this is fine, especially because these are your new vessels that you're 
piloting solo on the Ash yeah. SP. Uh, and with that, actually, I want the first rolls for the night. Uh, you. <laughs> Valda, you did not have magical abilities before this. Correct. Can you please roll me a... An intelligence save. Oh, goodness. I'm actually a horrible dice maker because I left all of my dice in a different room, I just realized. So, oh no. I needed to use the virtual dice roller. Oh no. <laughs> Which feels very dirty. <laughs> uh, that would be a nine. A nine. Mm, I have a I'm minus to... one intelligence. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, I'm going to need you to roll a d6. That would be a three. You have taken three psychic damage from, you know, being a little astral seasick piloting for the first time. That's fair. Mag, you're an artificer by trade. Yes. Does that make you inherently magical as well, or or not? I I can cast spells, uh, but I don't actually know where the power of that comes from. <laughs> fair enough. Um, I think you're fine then, uh, since like you had spells before, kind of thing. And same with you, Denny. Uh, you also had some stuff before, if I remember correctly. I was a bard, so yes, very much. You is a bard. I, I is believe. a I is a bunk bard bunk. A bunk. A bunk. A bunk. A bunk. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I guess now, now that we're like twenty minutes in, I can reveal the big like new cool thing for the cast. This late, I'm very proud of it. On brand, as you would say. Uh, we've come up. Oh, I don't want you. That's not right. <laughs> I loved it. Love it. That's so good. So we do have like a new uh, cool little logo uh, for the chaos ladies. I thought it was like so perfect with like the little like halo looking. O. it's like kind of what I was going for a little bit. But also, it's just chaotic. Vibe. It's just like a different color. It's perfect. It's like it looks like the kind of sign that would be hung up in like a bachelorette house. That like neon, glowy, like <laughs> like one dick for the rest of my life kind of deal. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I was going for. You're going for that um, one dick energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Um, but I think to answer that, uh, you should be able to do it. Wait, what? Type is feverishly. Um, but, uh, I guess now we can move on to like what's happening, right? Yeah. Is anybody having issues with their character sheets? Do we need to take a second? I, I mean, we don't need to, like, take anything. I can just add the spells that are required. I just can't add the magic initiate to my character sheet. It only has ones that are set for artificer. It, I don't know why. <laughs> Weird. Oh, very strange. Yeah. Huh. You can just pick a class and take two cantrips and one first level spell and just, like, know that you have them. Cool. If Let's that's do that. Yeah. Easy to work around, yeah. All right. Um. So then, yeah. Uh, Balor, to answer your question, uh, Margaret is on Mags, if I remember correctly. I think so. And let's see what these ladies are up to. Uh, we visit them here on the Astral Sea. Uh, so you need to get around some heavy security. Uh, Captain Franks is not fucking around. And because of that, there are patrols being uh, taken from the Astral Sea 
on the planet's surface. And um, I need everyone to make, um, I guess, are you, I imagine you're piloting these things and not trying to be like super crazy about it. Like you're not being flamboyant in your, in your uh, aerial maneuvers and you're not just like, I, I assume this, but I don't want Denise to is just anything like... from, these, from these chaos ladies. Denise is just like, oh my God, go straight. Go straight. Just go straight. Just go straight. Oh my gosh, it's going straight. Okay, just go straight. <laughs> <laughs> Valda, how are you doing with it, knowing that you are feeling a little bit mentally queasy from these reps that you're taking right now? <laughs> you know, this is a great question that you ask. Um, I feel like it's sort of a little bit like a teenager who's driving around the school parking lot for the first time. Ooh, like stop, go, or... Yeah, or like stop, like go. Not, not being able to turn very well. Yeah, like, it's just like, it's definitely not the smoothest magical driving. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think I can follow that. Um, so you're, you might have to roll a disadvantage about this just because you're not used to it yet. Sure. And honestly, Denny, you might as well just, you know, be giving these very unnuanced directions. Sure, yeah, uh, the book's Mag, there. I feel like after taking control of the helm of, of the spell jammer that you were on before, uh, the naughty list nature. Um, you have no problem moving this little thing around. And and you actually find that it's, you know, as an octopus doesn't really have many bones, this thing moves pretty fluidly. Uh, and you kind of gel with the vibe. So you're yeah. actually going to be at advantage for this. Yay! Um, I, also, I, like I also like to imagine that, like, I'm driving this thing and also having a conversation with Margaret, you know? Yeah, just, like, is there anything hit, you'd like to that point on? that No, nah, they're just, like, shooting the shit, talking about life, you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> so okay, that's, that's... When I, that's when I started working in my own shop. I was my own boss. <laughs> Ooh, just trying to convert her into an MLM. <laughs> what? Since she's trying to convert Margaret into an MLM, you can be your own boss. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just Mag had an article. I, I know. I know. Aw, Mag would never participate in a pyramid scheme. <laughs> Not intentionally. Probably. <laughs> Maybe. Knowingly. <laughs> Knowingly. <laughs> so can I get everybody to roll stealth checks for me? I just want to see what the general vibe of your stealth is right now. You said disadvantage or straight? Correct. Denis and Valda will be at disadvantage. Mag actually like, at advantage. Is there like double <laughs> disadvantage? Is that a thing? There shouldn't be. <laughs> well, I just already get disadvantage on stealth checks. Uh, then, then you already know this is just going to not be good. You just have regular disadvantage. I'm not going to make... I punish you like that. That'd Still be... at 19, even with disadvantage. Fuck you and fuck your mechanics. Whoa. Wow. wow. <laughs> Feeling um, spicy tonight. Yeah, Denise is <laughs> a wide range of emotions. Um, She's having a hard time. 15 with disadvantage. Dang. I can't even throw obstacles in y'all's way. What about you, Mag? Uh, I what was what was the modifier on that? Stealth. <laughs> on stealth. Stealth. Okay. Uh, I did I rolled, oh yeah, I rolled real bad. Oh no. <laughs> I rolled a five, so I need to see what I'm adding to things. Oh goodness. Oh uh, no. <laughs> it's just like yakking so loud. <laughs> just over here. You're just damn. not paying attention. You're just, just like, yeah, around. like just just so happy that Margaret's fine is like kind of forgotten that like there's this lich after us. You can hear Mag's Doing voice echoing great. through the cosmos. That's gonna be a six for <laughs> Mag. Six total. Okay, yeah. Well. The other one was a critical failure, so some dice are going to jail. Oh, I see. That's important as well. 
I, I guess what I will say for that outcome is that uh, because, you know, two out of three ain't bad. Um, the three of you come upon uh, some like, like an asteroid field of sorts. And you begin kind of creeping forward. And as you do this, you you see this ship uh, a few asteroids away that is in the shape of a great white shark. I didn't actually put that ship there, so this great white shark will be your representation for the evening. Uh, so this thing uh, with two out of three you are stealthy enough to be about your wits and know that this thing may be patrolling and looking for you. Uh, you can see quite a familiar flag uh, kind of waving on the back fin of this shark ship. And again, it is the ghost skull and crossbones of the Captain Frank's Armada. Hey, what um, would you all like to do upon the seeing this? First thing that Denis would do immediately is close her eyes, and she has no idea if this is going to work. Uh, direct all of her mental energy, like yes, into keeping the ship from like fucking up, but also over towards Mag's ship, and she's gonna go, Mag, 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 and yeah. just hope that Mag can hear her. Uh, through the whatever like psychic channels are connected between these ships. I don't know if that's going to work, but uh, you actually, the way that, you know, spell jamming works as you, if you can remember on the Nautilus ship, there was like a giant air bubble around the ship kind of giving you like breathable air and atmosphere and gravity. Um, if you kind of go side by side with mag's ship you are able to share air and kind of create your own envelope of space so the way i have you all positioned right now you would all be sharing the same air sharing the same space cool. and we can um, talk back and forth can talk back and forth you can like pop your window open like you can imagine that there was like this big glass window in the front of these little ships but like <laughs> um you can also press a button and it like drops down I like to think that Denise is just in her head screaming Mag, and Mag just like rolls down her window, and she's like, "Sup?" <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Slade. Um, but yeah, no, Denise absolutely is not thinking that she can roll down her window. Denise is just like, like hands on whatever is in front of her white knuckle, just eyes like half shut, like Mag in her brain, because <laughs> that's how she thinks it works. Wait, you're just thinking? Yeah, because I'm thinking the, the ship movement. Why would I not think Mag to communicate with <laughs> Mag? So I don't hear this. No, no. no good, 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 no, good, no. good, good, no, good. No, good, no, no, good. No, no, no. I'm glad. I'm very glad. <laughs> That's great stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, shark, shark thing, huh? Uh, it's a shark ship. A shark ship. <laughs> Uh, Margaret, uh, you see, do I, do we see this? Do I see, do I need to roll to see this? I do it. <laughs> My... uh, you, you can do it. I think with, uh, well, actually you actually need to roll an, a, an invest or perception yeah. because your stealth check was so bad. So I question bad. whether or not you're paying attention to things. Oh, I'm probably not. I'm probably just <laughs> like John on <and> Margaret. <laughs> yeah. Just, you're so excited. I can understand. Eleven. Uh, this ship is quite large in comparison to your ships. Uh, I would say that, you know, you can kind of see this grid on the screen. That is not representative of five feet. That's probably representative of like 25 feet. Like a 25 by 25 grid. So you can imagine that this shark ship is at least 75 feet long. Probably a little bit longer. So it's quite quite large in comparison to your little your little cruisers 
But uh, with an 11, uh, you are able to see that this uh, mm. shark uh. is making a patrol slowly and surely as it kind of goes off screen. And I will allow y'all to take it from there. That's what you perceive. So is this sort of like, uh, you know, in uh, like Zelda where like you're trying to avoid the things based on like their light and if you step into their light, they see you? I mean, it can be. <laughs> uh, and do it we can be whatever you want it to be. I was like, this is the vibe I'm getting right now. Uh, I'm leaving it open-ended. If you want to engage this bunch of pirates who could then sound an alarm, I will totally let you do that. If you want to stealth it out, you do that. Uh, do we know what direction we are heading in to get to the big black hole, the big black not Mount Doom hole that we're going to throw the schmuffy puff in? Uh, I believe that Heath told you the last session that you are headed for a green gas giant called Nox. Right. That is where we headed. But do we That'll... know directionally? Like, are we just kind of in space? Like, God, I hope I see a green gas giant someday. <laughs> uh, you actually... That's a great question. Uh... Dini, make a survival check. Oh, yeah, I'm so good at those. 12. A 12. Uh, that is very middle of the road. Yes, it is. Um, I will say with a 12 that you are able to perceive that once leaving the atmosphere of the planet that you were just on, the rock, the, the rock deserty place that you were at, uh, you are able to see on your horizon mm. a green tinted star that may or may not be the one you want to go to in her, in her head still oh my god mag do you see the green i think i think that's where we're going is that where we're going mag 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 why are you responding to me mag mag just still still in her head just a friendly dm reminder you do have stones of sending that work yeah, that's not what's on Denise's mind. <laughs> no, no, I totally understand. I'm just like making sure the, the entire party knows. <laughs> Denise just thinks she's being ignored because clearly if these ships can move with her mind, they should be able to communicate with her mind and Mag's just not listening to her and that's honestly really rude. <laughs> I'll, I'll say with your 19 sir, uh, stealth check from before, you actually can look over and see... Uh, Mag just chatting away with Margaret. So maybe what you're seeing is ig ignorance. Maybe it's not working. We will never know. Volta! 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 She's trying for Volta now. You like look over and you just see Volta just like like weird VR type <laughs> movements of trying to figure out what in the world she's doing. <laughs> Paula goes over here, and then she goes back, and then she goes <laughs> back to the group. <laughs> I think I the token really did it. <laughs> I think at this point, I'm just like low-key offended, um, and I'm just going to kind of start moving my ship into the direction of the green and be like, fine, if they don't want to listen to me, they don't have to listen to me and I'm just going to go on my own um, and kind of start moving in that direction, but also keeping eyes out for the shark. Okay. And I'm guessing with a 19 for your stealth, you're still trying to be relatively stealthy about it. Yes, definitely. Oh no, Balor. I don't know if they're driving with hazards on. That would be quite bad. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Valda is actually. <laughs> I for sure have hazards on a pair of thing. I've got like weird protected, like weird uh, safety lady. That's super funny. Uh, Are you guys following me or am I? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, yeah. I was going to ask, do we see 
Denise going off on her own? Yeah, you definitely see Denise going off on her own, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mac, Mac follows and goes, Denise, where are you going? <laughs> just, just out the window? Just out loud, yeah, with my mouth. <laughs> with my I, mouth. With my mouth in the in the bubble we're sharing as, I'm, we're, as we're driving. I'm going to the green because you were ignoring me, so I figured I would just go on my own. Denise, I I'm just very glad to see Margaret is alive. What do you mean I was ignoring you? I, I have been you didn't say anything you for like 20 minutes. It's not true. I've been calling you for about 30 seconds. And you have been ignoring me. And I just think that's kind of rude, especially in a situation like this where like we literally could die at any second. You didn't say anything at all. I've been thinking very loudly. Denny, I can't hear your thoughts. You didn't you didn't cast any any anything no but like I, the ship like i can think it's so, like i can think no oh, not... oh oh my sweet mm. my sweet little angel you it's only for driving mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not for talking like cool. well you know how you know how when 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 you're riding a horse you use the reins to move the horse but you can't call your friend with the horse reins right it's like that. Does that make when, sense? When you I say it think... like that, yeah, actually, it does make a lot of sense. There you uh, go. So thank you. Thank you. Of for course. That. You um, know I'd never okay. ignore you. You're my sweet, precious baby child. I know. Um, but, 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 big green, big green. Yeah, we gotta get. Oh, we gotta get to that planet, Margaret. Uh, would you like to go with us to the big green planet, or is there somewhere you would like to go? Cause we're gonna fight a lich, I guess. Becky, Margaret. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? I wasn't sure if you were talking in your head or not. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh no, my inside voice that where I narrate my whole life, it doesn't sound like this. It sounds like this. <laughs> this is Mag's Ooh. internal speech. <laughs> Every time she thinks about something. Well damn, here we are. <laughs> ah. Is Mag just badass truly Andrews? I possibly. <laughs> Who knows? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, I suppose we can take down this lich as Captain Franks. Yeah, I know you'll be right or die, Margaret. I knew it. Well, I was almost die, so I think... Uh, a little... It's a, a little, little vengeance on the menu. It's best served cold. Stone cold. Iron Chef. Perfect. And let's go to the green gas giant and let's try not to get eaten by that shark. Oh, yes. I've heard of Nooks. It's a quite a gassy place. Can we please go like now? <laughs> Did you know that a god died there? Oh, God. What god? Why are we still sitting here? There's a shark. It's doing circles. Gotta move. Actually, actually can, I, can you have a perception check for me there, Denny? <laughs> <laughs> well, with, the, with my plus four, it's an 11. So, could have been worse. I mean, it's really hard to miss a 75-foot ship coming back into, <laughs> into your range. So, you definitely see... Time to go! <laughs> and I'm going to start kind of like good. driving, huffing it as fast as I can. Uh, well, as fast as a, a stealthy spell jammer can huff it. Are you trying to like, like ring around the rosy this? Uh, essentially, I would like to, if there is a direct path to the planet, take that. But if we have to ring around a rosy it, I will, I will do that. To not be well, you, you have to go through this asteroid field to get there. That okay, is then, then something yes. you cannot avoid. Yes, I'm absolutely going to play musical chairs with this bitch. All right. So the three of you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, is where 
Too oh, close for says, comfort. I don't right. like it. That's, hey, I'm the DM. That's, <laughs> that's your choice. Right? You, so this thing joke? is... <laughs> We're fucked. <laughs> I mean, the other option was get seen immediately. I don't know what you wanted me to do. Oh, and uh, can I get stealth checks for everybody and i'm gonna oh, roll boy. a perception for the ship at large mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we didn't get a long rest did we i'm still down my spell slots is that correct yeah y'all didn't want to hang out at the campfire y'all just wanted to go uh, yeah that might have been a mistake <laughs> oh uh 19 again jeez louise those are loaded i am certain 17 i rolled two 17s for a total of 18. nice Mag. Uh I rolled a 14. Wow. With uh, advantage? Oh wait, we have advantage. Never mind. You do. I rolled a 14. <laughs> Y'all are strangely <laughs> consistent tonight. <laughs> I'm not gonna question it. Uh, same same number. Damn. The shark boat did not notice you as it went around the far side of this asteroid here. And uh, the three of you sneak on by. Oh, I don't know why this little this little asteroid is is coming along, but I can no longer see us. <laughs> well, I can see a snow bunny. Ah, that's true. We're gonna fall and off the now, world. And now you can't see anything. <laughs> so, uh, you actually do see some things. Let me start revealing the map. Oh. I feel like it's going to be bad. Why do I feel like it's going to be bad? <laughs> it's been a while since we had a combat episode, and I'm worried. Oh, that's true. So how would y'all like to proceed? Keep in mind that the shark is still coming back. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would probably... Janine's probably just going to keep fucking moving as fast and as stealthily yeah. as she can. And... Unless the other two divert wildly and are not following her, she is not going to be paying that much mind to what they are doing because she's pretty run one track minded at this point to like getting to where they need to go. Okay. This thing is coming back. Nope. No, it's not. No, no, it's not. Why would it do that? <laughs> why would it? Why would it exist? Uh, I was scared of a cartoon shark as I have in this very moment. <laughs> Uh, how far? How how far away is it? No, never mind. It's not that close. Never, never mind. No, it's pretty far away. I, yeah. yeah, I was gonna. What I wanted to do was cast Mage Hand and have it like start knocking on all the windows to try to distract it. But we are definitely not within thirty feet, so that's not gonna. No, that's not gonna do anything. Oh my god. It's like, good idea though. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, kind of like trying to like skirt out of sight of yeah. the shark, like kind of maneuvering around the big rock so we're not like in the eye line. Kind of using the terrain as little like. Mm -hmm. in, in that case, uh, you you make it through this little pass here and you are presented with two options <laughs> I like giving y'all options who doesn't like options right uh do y'all want to head left or right I'll say that the shark at this point has come around and still does not see you, you guys are far enough away for the sake of role play uh what is the most direct route to green yeah you don't know. Mm. Right now, you're just trying to not hit this asteroid as you are floating through astral space. Uh, I guess up and around, since I'm sort of leading the charge at this point with my little anxiety uh, <laughs> run. I'm fine with going that way. <laughs> All right, so you chose left. That's a great choice. As the three of you continue. Oh, shoot. You guys got ungrouped. Oops. <laughs> no! <laughs> and, 
around this corner. You are surprised when you see two very gray. I'm sorry, I made the wrong choice. First, uh, they're like, what the fuck are these things called? Uh, scavers. Sorry, I had like these stat blocks pulled up before and I had to like get rid of them for something. Um, and you see two brown scavers, and they look like these crazy looking sharks actually like instead of a shark ship you see an actual shark and these brown scabbers are actually pretty small they are uh you know maybe about six or seven feet long uh but they only have one pupilless eye and, it, and on these ones in particular it's it's golden and uh you see them kind of like opening their like their mouths as they're just like swimming around Effortless, effortlessly in the astral sea and you see these like little tiny dagger teeth as it as it swim at these these two brown scavers swim towards you i'm gonna need everybody to roll initiative mm, why? 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 why what what if we didn't though <laughs> Six, three, <laughs> three. 10. Denise was a 16. Yes. Valda was a 10. Nope. Mag with a 3. And what about these things? What are they going to roll? Ooh, they rolled fairly well. <laughs> uh, which means basically that they're just going to make the first move and. Uh, that first move is move towards you. Uh, we're gonna theater the mind this, uh, this kind of, this, in, this combat, but remember you are in your ships and these things are either going to attack your ship or if, you know, you have your window down like mag, they might try to come at you. Uh, seeing that mag is the only one with her window down or their window down right now. Um, this first one is going to come in and do a little bite attack. Ah. Does a nine hit your AC? No. All right. Can I well. roll up my window? <laughs> it's like you're far yet. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no reaction window roll up <laughs> feature. But something to consider in future iterations of this game. Wait, is uh, my window down? Because Denis was screaming in my mind. Didn't you roll it down to chat to me and be like, when were you talking to me? That's what I thought. I thought That's what I thought happened. I thought we were just in an air bubble together. Oh, I thought then you guys like actually spoke to each other. I thought we spoke, yeah. I mean, I, I think that in fairness, my window would also be rolled down because Mag and I definitely did have a back and forth and I want to be fair and in That's keeping good. with your rules. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with trying to be bitten for having my window down. <laughs> I, I just was unsure. No, totally. I get it. Cool. And I now that you're this. saying this, I kind of question it myself. Yeah. But <laughs> you're kind of just I'm goofing on, on it. Uh, yeah, I knew y'all well, were I talking in character, so I figure y'all had windows down. But um, Denis, this other brown scaver is going to try to bite you as well. Come at me, baby. Does an 18 hit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we're using, I'm using my hit points, right? Like for... The... Yes, this is attacking okay. you directly. Okay. Uh, it's going to be 13 points of damage. What? Are you sure? It yep. feels like so many points. It is exactly 2d6 plus 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, no, no. That's, that's cool. That's fun. <laughs> I like that. I'm all yeah. out of my highest level spell slots and bardic inspiration, so I'm just... Oh boy. <sighs> oh, wait a second. 
Less points of damage? Let me triple check. He's gonna be like, actually, it's 33 points of damage. <laughs> no, it's, I was looking at the wrong stat block. It's still 10 uh, points of damage, but okay. it, Ooh. 10 is better than 13, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, still this not is great, how the but... campaign ends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we all die in the middle of the Astral Sea, which is also a really depressing place to die because no one will ever know what happened to you. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> the Chaos Ladies are so mad about the OGL. They just died in the Astral Sea. <laughs> just tea. fucking died. They were just like, we'll die then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so... Denis, you are now up after facing Gray, Scavers, and yeah. the OGL. I think uh, the first thing that's going to happen uh, reflexively, I think, as that thing, uh, sorry, what, what, it, Scavered? Is that the word? You're Scavered? Oh, no, sorry. What are they called? The things that, the things just, oh, Scaver. Scaver, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sort of uh, just like re recoil uh, from this bite that I've just experienced. I think almost reflexively um, because, you know, I did just drink this potion that gave me all of this additional magic. I don't think I even know what I am doing as I sort of like throw out my hands and just like a, a shooting ray of fire uh, emits from my palm. And... Does a 10 hit? <laughs> Does anyone in chat want to give Denis advantage yeah, on this, on this give attacking me some, some intro <laughs> there? <laughs> Looking at you, Balor, with your like 42,000 channel points. Because <laughs> I can really use it. <laughs> but I'm not seeing any help. <laughs> so... So no, it does so not. How does, how does that ten? Oh wait, I got it. I got it. Okay. Oh, okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. oh my god, that's Damn. so much better. That's so much better. That's a twenty-four. Yeah, that definitely hits. Ooh. Okay. All right. Let me. <laughs> let me let me cushion that blow for you a little bit. Here's yeah, the Yeah. Yeah. No. Thanks. Thanks. Um. Okay. So this is going to be. Uh. Oh wait, really? Uh. I so I return those ten points of damage with fourteen points of fire damage straight to the face. Um, and then I think again, like a little bit reflexively, um, I am going to, do, 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 um, spend a key point. And then, uh, after this, this fire has come out of my hands, I'm just going to kind of like, ah, and like swipe at the, the thing in front of me, uh, for a, a flurry of blows, which yeah, also it. does very negligible, negligible damage given, like, I think it does a point of damage if I hit, which isn't that great. First one doesn't hit. The second one does a 16 hit. It does hit. Great. So that's an additional one point of damage for my total blows. 15. So totaling 15 points. Yes. That's not bad. Yeah. This thing is not looking great after that. I'm like, uh, oh, don't bite me. Ew, I'm bloody now. Gross. So I had actually described the wrong scavers to you before. That's my oh. fault. I was looking at the wrong stat block um, for something else. And these ones are actually gray, like I mentioned. And they have like a single eye on like this stalk kind of like coming out of their forehead. And you punch this thing right in the eyeball. And the, the fire itself scorches the, the gills on this thing. And it is not looking great. One more actual attack and it would probably leave you alone forever. If you catch my drift in the Astral Sea. I just realized I used my bonus action to flurry of blows. And what I should have done was use it to roll up my window. But I didn't do that, so I traded a point of damage for being able to roll up my window and make myself safe. That was such a smart way for me to do my turn. But anyway, uh, I guess I guess that's all I really have uh, at this point. There's not not much else I can do because uh, I'm, I'm out of almost everything. Yeah, and at this point, your uh, your ship is not moving because you've had to like get up and attack and do things. Um, so keep that in mind, Valda, as, as it is now your turn. Okay. 
Do I see these things coming up or am I so focused on trying to drive this thing? At, at this point, you totally see your friends are being berated by these uh, annoying looking sharks. You've dealt with them in the past. They are kind of a very common threat in the Astral Sea. And uh, this would not be your first time dealing with scavers. So do I do I know anything about them type of I've worked on what like I know their weaknesses. So you know that they're typically scavengers, but these ones look especially thin. Okay. Almost like they haven't been getting a lot of uh food and and like, you know, things just passing by. Okay. That's why they're kind of like hiding in the asteroid belt, kind of uh, doing less of the actual scavenging that they're known for and more of the sneak attacking mm -hmm. like you're seeing here. Um, they will feed on whatever they can fit in their mouth. So they saw a dragonborn and they tried to eat a dragonborn. Um, they're not always aggressive, but again, these ones look like they're, they're hurting for some food. They look very hungry. Okay, but we don't feel like these are, uh, like, related in any way to Captain Franks. This is just an unfortunate turn that we have taken in the Astral Sea, correct? Correct. Okay, sweet. As far as you know, these are just random sharks attacking you. Honestly, that is preferable, so I'll take it. Yeah. Okay. And clarification. Can I do a melee attack and a cantrip if I have two attacks per action. Yeah. That's a thing, right? Yeah, that is. Is that a thing? Isn't it? Or would you have two actions or two attacks per action? It's two attacks per oh, action. Yeah, two attacks no. per action. Correct, yeah, which no. is why typically you can't do like a cantrip and... Yeah. If yeah, it's like yeah. a bonus right. action cantrip, you can use it as your bonus action and still have two attacks. I was thinking of like having additional actions per turn, but yeah, that. Okay. Um, use an action surge, you can then use a cantrip as an attack and also your regular attacks. Ah. Okay. So I, the, this is sort of narratively how it goes. Okay. I am going to plan to try to grab the the thing, scavenger okay. guy. And then I would go to like be like, oh, I'm like gonna hit it with my morning star twice. But what ends up happening, because I'm not quite used to the magic yet, um I end up uh accidentally shocking it. Um and then hitting it. So the whole idea is like, I grab it and cast Shocking Grasp. Okay. And then smack it and use my action surge to do that. Okay. And with that action surge, you'd be able to attack it twice if you need to. Oh. Uh, which one are you attacking, by the way? Um, Probably the one by Mag. The one right above Mag. Okay. No, that's perfect. I just want to make sure I move you to the right one. Yep. And that I assign damage appropriately. So you can roll those attacks. Okay. That sounds completely reasonable. As your ship sort of amorphously opens its side, allowing you to do this action. It like is you were still connected when you wanted to do this action, and uh, you kind of told the ship to like stop and open a side port, and one forms magically. Sweet. All right. So we'll start off with the shocking rasp. Yes. That would be a 19 to hit. Oh, that definitely hits. Perfect. So it starts off by getting 1d8 lightning damage, and it, I rolled an 8. Yes. Awesome. Uh, these dice are rolling quite nicely for me right now. That is excellent news. So, and then I'm just going to do like a whap whap with my morning star. So that is 
Not as nice. Does an 11 hit? An 11 just misses. Um, does a natural one plus six hit? <laughs> Unfortunately, a natural one plus six is still a natural one, which is a critical fail. Um, yeah. So now you thought that you were, you know, going to be able to do everything, you know, control the ship, attack, maintain a concentration on flying, but that's just not possible. And unfortunately with a natural one, as you were like reaching out of the side of this ship and like trying to grab onto the shark and do all these things, you slip over the side of your uh, spell jamming helm and are now prone with the amorphous port open. But you don't lose your weapon or anything terrible like that. That would just be awful in the astral sea. And I didn't fall into the astral sea. You did not. But even if you did, you would still have a bubble around yourself. Okay. It, it would maybe only be enough air for a couple hours, but you would okay. still have it. All right. Great. This is... Yeah, so nothing to be super worried if that does happen. Mag or Denis, just keep in mind you will retain your envelope of air as it is magic, and this is Great. magic D&D. So, cool. Fantastic. But you are kind of like caught with your pants down as like you're now prone with like the door open. <laughs> um, Mag, you see all of this uh, kind of unravel in front of you. First, the uh, the electric shock of, of Valda testing out these new powers and uh, later with her then also falling over. Um, what do you do as you see your friends struggle to, you know, correct themselves? <laughs> this is either going to be really good or really bad. I'm not sure, but I'm here uh, for any of it. Pushes Whatever it is, the... do it. Just do it. Well, I we're on little ships, so I don't know if a spell that requires touch can be done to Valda. Am I able to do that? You want to touch Valda? Yes. Uh, if you go up to the side of her ship and... Uh, disengage from your helm you would be totally able to do that your ship would then stop and it wouldn't be able to move any further but you would okay. be able to do something and it takes my full action to roll up the window no 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 i would okay. let you do that as like a bonus action cool 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 uh You know what? Fuck it. Rule of cool. Let's go. Um, so. You know who's DMing right now? Come on. Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. This bitch. <laughs> uh, what I would like to do is get close enough to Volda to like touch, touch her uh, and cast spider climb. On Volda? On Volda. Okay, cool. So I will say that you are able to do that. And kind of like this, unless you want to describe it yourself, would you like to? Uh, yeah, here's what's going to happen. Uh, hey, Margaret, uh, can you can you keep this steady for a second? Hold on. Oh, sure. And she like just grabs a hold of like your chair. She like isn't Beautiful. connected to it at all. She's just is, like, I'm holding it. Love it. Uh, and then Mag is going to like hook a foot around Margaret and like reach out this tiny little hand and touches Walden and goes, it's okay. Just 
get your feet back on your machine and you'll be <laughs> so golden. <laughs> Uh, and so now uh, you have the ability to move up, down, across vertical surfaces, and upside down uh, while leaving your hands free. Uh, and you gain a climbing speed equal to your walking speed. So you can stick to your machine without fingies. <laughs> nice. You are a wonderful being, and I appreciate you. I just, above the table, every character Rachel plays, I just want to like hug yes <laughs> that's all now it's below the table <laughs> Dump. and and back to where we were and back. <laughs> uh the gray scavers are back up again and seeing that windows are open yes mag i also then they roll up my window <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> no no i'm the only one with my window open yep <laughs> That happens. No, you got a bonus action still. I did, and I <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> my window is open because I slipped. Oh. <laughs> What's your excuse, Denis? As this gray scaver comes up and again tries to bite you. Please don't. It's going to. Uh 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 oh wait. What you got? No, no I can't because it's not a reaction. It's a bonus action on my fucking turn. It's fine. I fucked up. It's fine. How about a twenty-two? Hmm. How about that twenty-two? <laughs> Yes, 22 hits. What about six points of damage for that attack? I mean, I'm not dead. That's good. Ow. 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 As, as this gray scaver comes in and uh, just like latches on until you shake it off really quick. This is so fucked up. It was Ew. definitely more than like a what is this bite? And Mag, as much as you tried to get Valda off the ground, you did just allow Valda to, to move a lot easier. Or a lot with a lot more grace, I guess you would say. Which for Valda means a lot. Because at this point, after that critical fail, she's on the ground and this Gray Scaver is going to at advantage, get another bite in. Oh. oh boy. This might be where we all die, in which case. No. It's the end. Oh my God. The DM has Bane. That is, I have, I have, I have Bane. Okay, perfect. Uh, does a 15 hit you? No. Then nothing happens. And the shark, as much as it tries to like get its head into the ship itself, uh, you see the almost organic sidewall of your ship just start closing itself. And while the shark head is now stuck inside, it was not able to like come up and actually bite you. Um, in, in fact, I would even say that this scar scaver is now grappled. So your ship is grappling the scaver. Okay. Which is great for you as uh, Denis, it is your turn. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um, okay, so the first thing... Hmm. <laughs> Remember, this one, you did a lot of damage to last No, turn. I and know, I right. know. I just have a lot of things I can do as bonus actions. Um, <sighs> but I think what I'm actually going to do... Uh, is the other one within 120 feet of me? Yes. Actually, it's... no. No. The one that is... Um, in front of me, I think once again, almost involuntarily and like kind of like reeling from the fact that I am in excruciating amounts of bodily pain right now because I've just been like chunked into by a fish that I wasn't expecting to see. Space um, fish. Space fish. Um, uh, Denise kind of gonna again like, like put her hands out and this time instead of uh, like lines of flame, uh, these three little 
pink and purple dots are going to sort of like arc out and around uh, and uh, enter the fish uh, through uh, one through each eye and then one through the mouth. Um, that's magic missile, missile, bitch. It hits no matter what I do. Um, I would actually reflavor this since it only has one googly. Oh right, should I forgot about that? eye coming out. So you get one there, and then two in the gills. Yeah, right yeah, that feels that feels right. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see how much damage I do. Uh, so the first one is four points of damage. Okay. Um, the second one is five points of damage. Excellent. And the third one is five points of damage. That was a very efficient magic missile, if I do say so myself. I would have to agree. And I'd like for you to tell me how this thing becomes obliterated as you fire these missiles off. So I think that, like... At first, it looks like, you know, they just sort of, like, touch the uh, the membrane of the eye and, like, the, the gills. And then they sort of seep in. Uh, and it, for a moment, nothing happens. And then, <laughs> then all of a sudden, uh, you see underneath the skin a, a faint pink and purpley glow, very similar to the glow of those uh, magic missiles. Yeah. And it just keeps getting brighter and brighter. And like, you can literally see it through the body of the fish uh, until at a certain point, it just becomes so bright that the whole thing explodes. Uh, and I am now fully covered in guts and whatever is on the inside of these space sharks. And he is like, ew. Yeah, um, it's like a resounding pop. That is exactly what happens. Uh, and then bonus uh, action, I roll my fucking window. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. Um, Valda, what are you doing uh, on the on the floor of your ship? Shark, like just biting at the air, snapping its jaws, stuck. Um. I'm going to use half of my movement to get up. And then while, uh, okay. I don't know if this is possible, but if the ship has sort of started to close around the head of this thing. Yes. Can I try to will it to continue closing and decapitate the shark? You will need to roll for it, but yes. I figured. What would you like me to roll? You will need to roll an intelligence check. Oh, fuck. Because driving a spell jammer okay. is based on your intellect. Nine. Can I help? I don't think I can help. But... <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how you'd help, especially since you rolled up your window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> roll back down my window. No, I <laughs> no, I, I can't help. I, I'm helpless. Oh, I wouldn't say you're helpless. Especially uh, when we have Valor in the building. Thanks, Valor. <laughs> All right, come on. Come on. Keep in mind, uh, audience, I am not giving the results until all complaints and uh, <laughs> questions have been answered. <laughs> Goodbye. What, what, what was that advantage roll? A six. Flat six or? A seven minus one. Okay. okay. I see. Unfortunately, it gets a little bit tighter, but you just hopped back onto the helm and <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. Slade, let's do it. <laughs> All right. Let's choose a different die. Yeah, put that other one in jail. They and... were rolling so well. I'm done. I got an eight. <laughs> Well, <laughs> uh, the shark actually like drops out its tongue and a cake that says you tried. 
uh, pops out. No. <laughs> but, uh, no, it, it just it keeps thrashing and it does squeeze down a little bit, but it oh. not enough to decapitate it. Okay. <sighs> yes, Balor, at some point it is survival of the fittest. Thanks, Which... Lane, for your words of encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a child. Okay. Just like a and... <laughs> Since there's like just a little bit of a temper tantrum that happens, you know, like kick something but actually hurt my foot. <laughs> I feel like it's how things are going. No, oh, wait, no, wait, no, no, wait, no. What the fuck? No, no, Zeki, no. Put it away. I... I, I rolled initiative for it, and that's where it ended up being after oh. two rounds of combat. Um, or a round and a half. I my window. Yeah, as you uh, see the viscera float around your ship, and actually kind of get stuck on your front glass, it's kind of gross. If you, I mean, your otter ship is able to like know what you want, and it kind of like wipes itself, and it's really cute. But it's cleaning off these like shark guts, and Chum is in the water oh. in a much larger scaver, a brown scaver. And this is the one that I was talking about before that has one large golden eye. Mm. And uh, instead of just a bunch of little needle teeth, this one has two additional fangs that look like it. they're almost like rolled into this leathery skin on the outside of it. It's kind of gross and completely terrifying as this thing does a flyby. Mm -hmm. Mag, you're up. Shit. Oh, but... Well, ah, this changes everything. Uh, beans. Um, how far away is this big boy? Uh, I'd say it's about from you, about 20 feet, 15, 20 feet. Cool. Uh, Mag's gonna throw fireball at the big boy. Oh, snap. Yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's nope. Get away. Go get on out of here. You nasty, nasty boy. Uh, range spell attack. Let's do it. Oh, God. <laughs> no, fuck those dice. They've been mean to me. Not jail worthy, but just like mid, you know? I I, I do understand. Just like, yeah. just I'm like, disappointed in you. Yeah, you've you've been a problem. Uh, 18. Does that hit? That, that does in fact hit. You got Bane on the D on the Savior of Wealth. I guess it doesn't matter, but you did get Bane on that. Me? Nice. No, Zeki. Not oh. you. Me. <laughs> You're okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh Nani, the two D ten police. Where do I hide those? You know what? I'll just do it on here. It's fine. Uh -oh. Uh that guy is gonna take six points of fire damage what no you rolled six ones i rolled i rolled 2d10 i thought you rolled fireball this whole firebolt thing is gonna <laughs> confuse the hell out of me <laughs> oh no i used my cantrip firebolt <laughs> I was like, whoa, level three spell, just burning it. No, 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 no. I use one level two spell, Spire Climb, and I might have regrets. I don't like to use my spells. Can we Fair long enough. rest in our spell jammers? Are we allowed to do that? Slade, that is exactly what I will do. Uh, sans a saving throw. So <laughs> not a problem. Uh, so six um, points of damage? Yeah. And may I locate that on its big eye? <laughs> Because I'd like to aim uh, yeah. the eyeball. Okay, yeah, cool. Of I would, that, I'd that like hits. to throw a bolt of fire into the eye of this guy for six points of damage. Please and thank you. You got it. You will see what the outcome of that 
particular uh, effect will be. Get out of here! We're, we're having a moment! <laughs> Free action, please. Of course, of course. Uh, anything else? Uh, do I have anything else? Right. I always forget bonus actions are a thing. Uh, wait, what's this? What is this? What is this? As you read what this is, Margaret looks at you and uh, kind of looks amazed that you were able to do that. Oh, I didn't know you could do such a thing. Thanks. Uh, I, sometimes you just gotta throw fire at a pest. Uh, no, this is a weapon attack. Never mind. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I leveled up and I got branding smite as a bonus <laughs> action. I have no idea what that is. Branding smite? Yeah, it's it's he an artifact. With uh, the brand. Uh, yeah. But I can only use it if I use a weapon attack. I do like the idea that branding spite is just like Nike, Apple, just like all the brands just like descending on the <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, capitalism. Ah. This swing of my sword is brought to you by HelloFresh. <laughs> HelloFresh campaign like sponsor someday. us. We're still open to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they asked a lot of Twitch. Anyway, this is yeah. <laughs> this is not part of this at all. <laughs> not at all. Not, at uh, all. not a sponsor. <laughs> the uh the gray scaver that's left is going to try to get itself loose. Uh and I am rolling this at disadvantage because Slade said so. <laughs> Which I'm very happy that Slade did because I rolled a 20 uh, for one of my <gasps> rolls. So, um, yeah, Smite, branded by Manscaped. Natural um, or not natural? Natural 20. So the disadvantage got me much lower. And I would say that, uh, I guess, Valda, roll me... An intelligence save at advantage? At advantage? At advantage. Fifteen. Yeah, with a fifteen, you are definitely uh winning this this grapple fight as this thing thrashes back and forth, uh not really able to move and um it can't make any attacks either because you are far enough away that it cannot do that. Um, we're going to be back to the top with the inspired Denis. Oh, uh, oh, did we kill the, oh, oh perfect. Fantastic. Wonderful. Um, so the first thing uh, I <laughs> kind of like, <laughs> kind of like smack myself in the face and like, get it together, get it together. And then I realized that that might not be the best way to do this, but in those smacks, I do cast a healing word. Uh, so a bit of a- That's a hilarious, just, just smacking the health into <laughs> yeah, yourself. Yeah, I'm smacking the health into myself. And that's actually, uh, oh, cause I'm out of fucking second level spell spells. There's only one before. I heal for two points of damage, you know. That's more than you had before. For sure, more than I had before. Uh, and let's see, cast, um, what does this do? Uh, oh, oh, uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. Wow. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> what I am going to do, um, uh, is uh, fuck it, the, tried and true, uh, fire bolting the big boy because fire, yeah, fire bolts. Now I'm confused yes. by them as well. I'm fire bolting the big boy because she's done it once before. It mm -hmm. seemed like it, it worked really fucking well. Um, and she's gonna try again. And she has that inspiration, which she needs, because that was a six on the dice. That was a 19 on the dice. So that definitely hit. hits, for sure. So that's going to do... Ooh, ooh, oh my. Well, so we started off real strong with a nine on the first dice, which is sweet, and then rolled a one on the second dice. So that's going to be 10 points of uh, fire damage for that firebolt. Okay. Uh, and are you also um, 
in the spirit of Mag, attempting to hit it on its eyes on its big eye. Yeah, I would love to do that actually. That yeah, feels, that feels right. You all have now done a bunch of damage just to its eye. It is blinded and will have a harder time uh, signaling attacks to you. And from what I'm seeing on uh, Denise's screen, let's give a shout out to Ben for making some food. <laughs> I love him. He's my favorite. <laughs> That's good. Being married and stuff. <laughs> Continuing. Uh, Valda. What you um, got? <clears throat> You're at your helm. This thing is just kind of like floating on the side of your ship. Yeah. I am now going to attempt to uh, smush its head in with my morning star because I'm a little annoyed. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we'll attack it once. Dirty 20. That definitely hits. Um, and then, uh, another dirty 20. That also hits. So, do, 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 do. Total of 12 damage. A total of 12 damage between the two? Yes. Uh, how do you kill this thing as its head is just on the inside of your ship, tail flailing on the outside? This is just like a redemption arc that I have always wanted. Excellent. Um, yeah, I'm just sort of frustrated and I sort of am like, I'm going to go and try this again. And I'm just like... Fuck it, and I just take my morning star and just like whap, whap, and I just sort of picture like the other half of its body just sort of slides down and then falls into the astral sea. Yeah, uh, you give it the old whap, whap, and as soon as like the body on this thing goes limp, the sidewall on your ship seals completely shut as if it was going through any other inanimate, inanimate object. And uh, now there's a shark head in your ship or a scaver head in your ship and a scaver body next to your ship floating kind of down into the side, down into the left, as if you would. Um, but just to note, more chum in the water. Um... Mm -hmm. Now that are is there anything else you'd like to do with a bonus action and or some movement? Okay, so with my bonus action, because I was like, oh, I'll roll an intelligence check to see if Falda understands about chum in the water. Oh, you definitely would know about something like that being from I would. Like traveling the astral sea before you've seen scavers you understand oh, okay. what they do okay that's great because i have rolled a two <laughs> and was about to put more chum in the water um in the yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, i think that i'm just sort of gonna like use my my foot my boot to just sort of like slide the head away okay just because it's a little unsightly yeah uh, that checks out you know i think that's totally fair um i mean if there's nothing else uh mag we're back on you you have a blind brown scaver in front of you you have a margaret next to you what are you doing? Hey, remember my steel defender? I do. Uh, <laughs> can, I, can I bring Felix back? 
Of course. Felix has never left your side. Oh, beautiful. Oh, then Felix should have been in turn order. I assumed that he got left on the ship. Um, I mean... Because he hasn't run around with us on the desert planet. <laughs> he was there the entire time. He was just... He was, he was in quiet. shock. He was like, yeah. oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, cool. Then he's in the turn order now. Okay, yeah, for sure. Uh, right after me. Um, <laughs> this is what happens when you sleep between sessions. You're like, I forgot about my little capybara who's just been swimming along, just kind of like on autopilot, just resting, getting, him, getting his shit back together. You got to uh, power down to power back up, you know? That's true. Yeah, for Rest sure. That's important. Um, perfection. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with uh with. Wait, is anything dead? I forgot. I know all time. all of the gray scavers are now dead. There is just one large, hungry, blinded, and pissed off brown scaver. The big boy. Cool. I'm gonna throw another firebolt at him. Yeah, let's do it. Eh, you know, it gets the job done. Or does it? That's the good question. Uh, <laughs> does a 15 hit? <laughs> a 15 does in fact hit. Hooray! Let's give damage. Uh, please take 14 points of fire damage. No way! That's no such way. a good amount of damage. Two sevens, baby! Uh... I would like to hurl them into its gaping maw, please. Uh, you do that. Right in the mouth. Right in the mouth. <laughs> uh, cool. And this thing kind of, like, closes its mouth after that. And, like, it kind of, like, whatever would be, like, equatable to, like, a belch. Kind of, like, belches out and, like, some smoke kind of just comes out of its mouth after being fire bolted. <laughs> um, uh, but that thing also doesn't know where that that came from. So good job. Hooray. Um, and Felix roars. Felix, like, who's just been floating along next to this little this, this little trio of, of sea creatures just been swimming around, just like wakes up and roars. And now, um, any enemy within like five feet has disadvantage. <laughs> okay, I will note that. And I would say that uh, Felix could have been inside of your ship if you wanted. Oh, I think because little Cappy Bear is swimming in, swimming in the astral sea. Yeah, if you want to do that, and he's just also like sharing your air bubble. Yeah, that's fine. So it's like close enough that it's like sharing. And and just like floating around doing its thing, I like it. You need air. It, what? I mean, he's just he's a construct, so he doesn't need air. He doesn't. You're right. That's my own. He but sharing anywhere. sharing envelope. I'm just saying, if you wanted yeah. to go up and give him a hug, you would also have air. <laughs> <laughs> um, but keep in mind that that means he's also just out in space. <laughs> I accept this as a possibility. If he dies, you can summon him back, right? Yeah, I can rebuild yeah. him. Okay. Uh, which is why I was like, if he died on the ship, I'll just rebuild him. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's fine. Uh, I do have a question about like the, the consciousness. Like, is it the same sort of like consciousness that travels between the, you know what I mean? It's sort of like, uh, God, what is that movie? Is it The Illusionist where he's just killing the clones of himself the whole time? It's it's giving that a little bit. No one knows what I'm talking about. This is I no, know I know exactly. what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm anxiously awaiting Mag's response. <laughs> I would say that the way I construct him, he tends to have the same personality. But I don't think Mag believes that Felix has a soul in the same way the rest of us do. But that in no way negates how much he is loved and cherished and respected. It's a very egalitarian response. It's kind of just like, you know, 
big robot pet. <laughs> yeah. I'm here for it. Um, so, I guess that means we're back at the top of the order. If, Mag, you're done. Yeah. Nobody's close enough for Felix to bite, so. How's the shark looking? Shark? Not looking great. If we were playing a different edition of this game, you would even say that it's bloodied. Okay. All right. And is it my turn now? That is correct. Am I within 90 feet of it? Yes. Great. This either is going to be great or it's going to be a complete waste of my turn. Um, so that's how I'm this gonna, game works. I like I'm it. I'm going <laughs> to roll down my window. Um, I am going goop. covered in goop. Uh, just kind of like. You know, I think I've probably at this point, like, tried to get as much off as I can, but I'm still completely covered in blood and gore and semen yeah. and whatever. Um, and I'm going to pull my guitar out. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to press the button on the bridge. Um, and I'm going to start strumming. And uh, I'm going to go, go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, little big shark. Uh, and I'm going to cast sleep. Okay. Um, and I'm going to roll 5d8. And if that is more hit points than it has, it will go to sleep. Okay. So I really fucking hope it's more hit points than it has. Yeah, let's, let's see. One, two. Where's my other d8? And, uh, just so the chat knows, if you give... Uh, Denny advantage on this roll, she would be able to re roll all eight of them. I would love that. So, okay. I'm just waiting for that, that advantage to come in. I'm hoping it'll come in. Um, all right. So, one, two, three. God, I need it. Got it. Got it. Sweet. Okay. So, I'm gonna re-roll this one. And honestly, these two as well. You got another inspiration. Oh boy, okay. Everybody wants you to be able to re-roll. Okay, so the, we're at 19 with 3d8. 27. That is enough. Okay. <laughs> well, I haven't even finished rolling. So yeah, uh, 27 plus uh <laughs> slade you're terrible <laughs> you're the worst <laughs> um so yeah i'm just sort of like lightly strumming the guitar and serenading this massive one-eyed shark uh praying to god that it just fucking goes to sleep so how exactly does that song go go to sleep go to sleep go to sleep little big shark boy go to sleep go to sleep <laughs> go to sleep please right now and as you let out that final note uh this thing closes its eye and kind of flips over on its side it is asleep honestly didn't think that was gonna work but I'm not mad about it. <laughs> Does that mean we're out of combat? Uh, yes, you are out of combat for the moment. Um, for sixty, for 60 seconds, seconds right? exactly. All right. Uh, well, my windows rolled down, so I'm gonna kind of be like, "Guys, are you okay? Guys." <laughs> I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> should we try and get out of here? Well, we got a moment. Mm -hmm. Should we run away? Are we yeah. run away? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm. I'm already kind of moving in a, in a direction. Like, yep, yep. No, nope, running for sure. Um, but very on, very on team. Run away. Um, although I do shout back to both Mags and Falda. If you have anything for healing, I wouldn't mind. And then kind of keep going. All right. Uh, Valda, anything, any response, rebuttal, Repose. Um, I'm just going to kick the head out of the ship. Okay, yeah, the 
the wall sensing what you want to do just opens a side window and you kick it out no problem and then it just goes and like shuts back up perfect all right so the three of you are now out of combat and i assume in the next 60 seconds you get as far away from here as possible yes all right you've successfully beaten this encounter congratulations Hooray! We did it. Woo uh, uh also as we're sort of like making our skedaddle um while our windows are rolled down like mag pulls up real close to denny and says hey you did real good out there and i hope this makes you feel better Blows a little kiss for a healing word Nice. Yeah. So please take four healing points. That's what I got. It's so nice. Hey, what's that big neon sign that says Chaos Ladies? Let's go over there. <laughs> <laughs> and as you break through the fourth wall, the audience is smushed to death by these large astral spell jammers and everyone wins <laughs> i was muted uh i said a bunch of nice things to mag for the things Aww. that she did for me but it's okay i didn't realize i was muted <laughs> oh, i'm sorry i didn't know you were muted either <laughs> Denise <laughs> just thought them again Denise once again oh, like oh, mag, thank you so much you're my favorite <laughs> you just kind of see her eyes close like stroking her hair deep in thought you know <laughs> <laughs> So y'all are headed for this green gas giant as it gets closer and closer. Um, one last time, I would like for y'all to roll me a stealth check. At various advantages. I'd say no one is at disadvantage at this point. You've been, uh, you got out of there pretty quickly and you've been traveling. So everyone is at least at base. Yeah. I'm just going to uh, throw it out there. Uh, if has channel points. Uh, well, Mag's got a dirty 20, so... Nice, Mag. Well, yeah. uh, Denise got a dirty 7, so... A dirty 7, I like Yuck. it. Disgusting. <gasps> Disgusting 7. That's 7 filthy. Valda, so, what did you end up with? So I still get disadvantage. That's true, because of... Um, I would argue that while in the ship, your armor is not affecting your stealth. So you would be able to roll straight roll on that one. Okay. So no then disadvantage. Me... Yeah. 18. That's a much better outcome for this situation. Than the four that it would have been. Yeah, for sure. Uh... Dang. Uh, so, Denis. It looks like no one in the chat is coming to your aid. Yeah, the chat fucking hates me. <laughs> <laughs> they don't hate Katie. They hate Denis. I mean, Denis is really <laughs> fucking annoying, so I'll give them that. <laughs> uh, <sighs> wait, what? wait, wait. Oh, no. Yeah, that's fair. Honestly, that's that's super fair. See? <laughs> this is what happens when Denis is helming the ship. All right, so that's a seven. Monk actually gave you inspiration. Oh, thank you. I will roll again. Yeah, a lot of inspiration has been needed. This uh That is a dirty 20. Episode. Dirty 20? Yes. Much like Mag's dirty 20, you are now stealthy AF. As uh the three of you trot along for the rest of this day getting a long rest yes. if you need it. I oh, thank you. <laughs> You find an asteroid and you are able to hang behind it for a while to get some rest. Um, there, there are no patrols in your immediate area. I think you've gotten away successfully from your prison planet that you were stranded on. That's, that's good. Do we see, is the green star getting any closer? Like, have we? It definitely is. is. Um, after, after like a full day of traveling, uh, because I would say that you, you all traveled for, for probably another 
you know, five or six hours just to like make sure you got some space between you and Captain Franks. And uh, behind you, the entire armada is now nothing but almost a memory as uh, none of these ships are in any kind of view. And uh, ahead of you, you can now actually see the shape of this green gas giant. Hmm. I would love to have maybe Valda roll me a d6. Two. Okay. Uh, with a two, the next day goes without a hitch as you continue uh, to get even closer now to Nox, the green giant. And you're really starting to sense like the actual scale of this this planet. It is, you know, astronomically speaking, about the same size as you know Jupiter. Um, but it's like very green. And uh, as you approach, you enter the atmosphere of this world, and it's heavy. It's dank. It is. <coughs> it is not something you want to keep the window open for, everybody. So keep that in mind as you descend down. Uh, I also like that in my brain these are crank windows and not course. just like yeah, a yeah, button yeah. you press. <laughs> I make so much sense in space and. Fine. <laughs> yeah, and I would actually like for all, all of you to make a uh, perception check at disadvantage with how hazy it is on this gas giant 13 9 10 okay so with the corresponding rolls uh you start ascending deeper and deeper into this atmosphere uh and you're not really sure where you're supposed to land. You just know that Heath told you that this is the next stop and that there'd be somebody here that would be able to, you know, help you move along and maybe some sympathetic voices. And with the, the best role of a 13, Valda, you are kind of able to make out some shapes. Uh, you kind of see suspended in the air that there are some... Uh, what look like earthen platforms, but they look kind of barren and like no, no kind of obvious constructions, no obvious um, people or, uh, or animals kind of walking around or anything. They seem pretty barren. Uh, but then you continue to travel for another, you know, 10, 30 minutes. And in front of you, all of a sudden you see this very large mass that looks almost like a like a body. And at the center is what looks like a corpse. A giant, colossal corpse, but a corpse nonetheless. And as you descend, uh, you see you start to see some building structures on this corpse, like actual homes and like little shacks and shanties. And you also see like you know, obvious decay going on in like an like open rib cage with like organs and stuff. And uh, can I actually have Denis roll me an Arcana check? I don't want to, but yes. Oh, 18. Uh, with an 18, you are your magic vibe is like throwing like a red flare. Uh, fireworks are going off in you, a bad way or in like a just everything is magical way just in a everything is magical and this must be that dead god <clears throat> that remind me why about. we were looking for the dead god <laughs> I've already forgotten uh, you weren't really actually looking for a dead god you were just told to come to this planet because there was someone here who would help us right yeah okay did we do we have any information about this person or is it just go there and they'll find you? You all didn't ask very many questions and were really adamant about just leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
in hindsight, we Which might. Is, like totally <laughs> valid. Like you did not want to be there, so like I get it. That's fair. That's but fair. You're also flying a little blind now, as you descend down. And are you gonna like park next to these places? Are you gonna try to sneak down somewhere nondescript? Are you landing on the foot? Are you landing on the groin? Are you landing on the head? The chest, the arms, the fingers. Where would you like? Where would you like to park? Okay, park on the belly. Uh, this is like a nice vantage point, you know. So you know, the belly is where a lot of these structures are located. Oh, uh, where are they least densely populated with architecture? Uh, probably the ed the ends of the extremities. You can see that, like a lot of like the fingers. Uh, they're th on one hand in particular. It looks like a safe spot because the palm is like facing up. And you can see that people have harvested parts of this god. And it looks like people have been doing this for a very long time. Uh, the bones are all still connected. And you can see the tendons and stuff. But a lot of like the meat has been like visibly and uh very intently trimmed and cut i know that i say this a lot but ew <laughs> that's, that's it. it that's all <laughs> do i have any idea of who this dead god is uh yes actually roll me a history check Eleven. Okay. Uh, you know that this god is um, Gond, the god of craft and knowledge. And um, you have heard tales of this place. Um, kind of growing up, everybody. It, like all the children of the astral sea when not on planet like i guess let me rephrase that because when you're traveling in the astral sea you don't age so obviously you spent time on a planet itself where you would then age uh and what wherever that home was volta i don't know if we ever fully established it um you were told tales of the um, the tale of Gond and how he became Nox whenever he, you know, metaphorically flew too close to the sun. And in this case, um, became a noxious um, gas giant from an explosion that happened uh, from trying to combine his body with arcane objects and try to like integrate and potentially become one of the first constructs. Um, this was a failed attempt, however, and cost Gond uh, not only its immortality, but also a uh, forever spot in the Astral Sea. And you can relay this to your companions as you uh, kind of land on the left hand of Gond. Yes. I do convey this. <laughs> wow. Wow. No. That's so interesting. I can't believe you just said all of that right now. <laughs> in, in more contemporary stories, um, you know that people are harvesting Gond's body for... Um, magic and like this is like pretty potent stuff people run their ships on it much like the space gas space farts um there are different types of engines that the astral spell jammers run on and you know in this section of the galaxy dead god is a pretty good fire starter so i'm not gonna do it but okay. if Denise was curious, if she was to like take a chunk of whatever is there, would that 
give her power in any way? Because they're just like break off a piece of what is effectively the ground. You would have to find out. It's so gross, though. Hey, uh, uh Margaret. Um, quick question. Uh, did your crew, did the captain have any contacts here on Knox? Uh, did did the Nautilus by nature make trips here? Is there anyone you know of that we might? reach out to for assistance in a clandestine way also hey let's all pick fake names now for this planet so we don't fuck up oh you have fake names oh my god i forgot she was with us <laughs> uh, uh well we figured maybe traveling uh incognito would be a good idea considering uh Remember when we went to the the planet with the with the with the ice farts and we all got we all got wrecked and we were all just like Ooh, oh Volda yes. we're so glad that you're here with us oh Volda tell us your life story and so, and we all just kind of fucked up real bad and then they looked right through our disguises in the desert so maybe we should just like get ourselves together so one do we got a contact two everybody pick fake names. <laughs> I oh. do know a chef that actually came here on a ship once. He may still be around. I love that. While this is happening, um, Denis, today's been very high risk, high reward, right? Uh, mm, sure. <laughs> Denis uh... feels like today has been very high risk, high reward, and Katie is feeling spicy. Um, so... I think the first the first way that Denise is going to go about this is that she's sort of going to whip up a little mage hand and see if the mage hand can't like get up some of the god ground so that she doesn't actually have to go down and pick into a body because that feels still kind of gross to her. Um, but if that doesn't work, she has a couple backup plans. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you send this mage hand off and it like like goes almost out of sight to one of these fingers and tries to like pry off a loose piece of God and a hand a, a fist full of God comes back to you. I hold it. Now what can I do for a few God more? <laughs> what, what, what <laughs> happens? <laughs> um, you're just holding it. I'm, well, I, I'm gonna start by holding it. Okay, you know, take it in baby steps. I'm not just gonna like eat it straight off the bat or something crazy like that. It feels kind <laughs> of warm. Okay. Um I turned to mag. <laughs> yeah, like uh, lukewarm. Like Mag. What yes. can you do with this? Because I feel like if any of us could do something with this, it would absolutely be you. And I just like I don't know. I just feel like you could like put it in my weapon or like put it in my armor or like maybe put it in my hair. That could be kind of cute. Uh, should I roll for something to know if I know what to do with this weird dead flesh? <laughs> uh, roll uh, arcana or history check, whichever you would prefer. Okay, cool. I want to go with arcana. Okay. Wait. A uh, twelve. A twelve. Can I help? I'm I'm there. I'm kind of like you know looking over it. I'm. Yeah, you can assist. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, mm, Mag, like mm. it's a little bit warmer over here, and like a little bit cooler over here. Um, and it kind of smells like sulfur over here, but flowers over here. It's a very eclectic piece of flesh. The part that's like been exposed to the radiation of astral space uh, smells like sulfur, and the inside that would have been cleft off uh, is what smells like flowers. Well, I I can say that if you put the inside on, it would be a nice perfume. Did you roll with advantage? Oh, do I get advantage? Yes, Sorry. I'm helping you. you. Oh, you get advantage when someone is. A I was so caught up in our in our RP <laughs> about this flesh. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, eighteen. Oh wow! With an eighteen, you have <laughs> you've heard you've heard tales of artificers 
who have somehow been able to, you know, get a hold of a piece of a god one way or another. Uh, you've heard of, you know, um, people sleeping with gods and taking hair or or other bits of, you know, stuff with them after their encounters uh, and using that and shaping it into um, powerful and um, rare magical artifacts. And uh, you've always kind of wanted to tinker with such a thing. Well, uh, I know some stories that went around uh, uni um, many moons ago. Uh, I, maybe we should take some more of this god uh, for me to uh, master my craft further. And you just see, like, Mag very, like... <laughs> like I kind of shoot my mage hand like, to help her out. <laughs> lift, three hands going. Like, scooping some into, like, a pouch on her belt. It's like, I'm just gonna put that right there. Would you like a couple more fistfuls? <laughs> uh, just a few fistfuls more. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. So, reading, I'm reading what Mage Hand says. It is not a concentration spell. It lasts for a minute. It's a yes. hand trip. Yes. Is there any reason why I can't just conjure a bunch of hands to help her out for like a minute so she can get as much as possible? Uh, mostly because you can't do that many cantrips at once. But, and like once you like do another one, I guess you're not concentrating. No, on I'm it, not but... concentrating. That's what I'm saying. Um, like within that minute time. But you're really, <laughs> I mean, I guess you at most could cast 10 of them. You've a got minute. Ten little spectral dragon claws, like going through, trying to like help you. <laughs> but as like you make the last one, the first one disappears, and so that's on. That's fair. So forth. That's fair. So you can like constantly be casting it like oh. every six seconds if you <laughs> wanted, I guess. Correct. Uh, I use my uh, all-purpose tool to turn it into a spade, and I just yeah. like scoop some and put yeah, it in. Yeah, that's way more efficient than yeah. casting. Yeah, no, I'm like with the go. fucking mage hands. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, I'm putting I'm putting them in like Felix's little like pouch saddle bag. Oh, it's adorable. So but I am. Like, I am so tempted to take a bite of some of the god flesh, but I know I shouldn't, and I don't know that Denis would, but I want to. <laughs> oh, uh, Mag is definitely gonna, like, after having scooped some with hand and put in, in like, fanny packs, so there's a little bit in, like, one of Mag's fanny packs, and then a lot more in Felix saddlebags. Uh, it just kind of goes... And taste um, like the little bit of like residue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fingers. No, you totally do that. <laughs> just like kind of not thinking about it. Just like it smells like flowers. Well, no. Actually, no. Sorry, uh, Mag thinks it. So it's like, oh, this smells like flowers. Oh, oh no! I've accidentally licked my hands. Ah, oh, fuck. Roll a d twenty for me. Okay. Oh my god. She's gonna turn into a dragonborn too. <laughs> <laughs> a two, please. Uh, what, what languages do you know? Oh, what languages? I know common and gnomish. You have now also just learned dwarvish. <gasps> wow. I take a fucking bite. I take a bite I immediately. <laughs> I wouldn't say you're like proficient in it yet, but you're like on your way. Immediate bite. Any any reservation seeing Mag lick that and be okay. Just just full blown bite. She's too curious. <laughs> just Mag looks up and just like says something in another my, language. My mouth now. feels funny, but says it in dwarfish. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what. Immediate bite. Just. Um. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. She gets something cool. I want something cool. I understand. Uh, do you swallow this bite? 
the yeah. how big of a bite is it i mean i'm not I like questions. i'd say it's probably about like i, I wish i had something to take a bite of right now um it's like a not a tiny nibble but it's like a small bite and she okay. definitely follows it so less than like biting it into like taking a big bite into an apple but yes. like about like, a, well, like a, a small bite into an apple like a, like a small bite into an apple yeah, yeah like we'll say that into an apple. funny how that works her just like pure curiosity has fully outweighed hurt you this is disgusting and mag just started speaking another language and she has way too much fomo right now <laughs> uh yeah roll a d20 for me okay Ooh. volta you see all of this happening 11. An 11? I mean... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Um, I'll be very swift. Uh, you die. What? <laughs> Actually, roll me. Oh, <laughs> I'm no. <just> joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, are, are you proficient in nature? I am uh, half proficient in nature because I am a bard. Well, now you're fully proficient in nature. As for whatever reason, you you swallow that bite and you look up into the astral sea. And it's as if the universe is calling to you. Oh my god. The last time I felt like this, I took a lot of drugs. <laughs> wow. You just feel like one with nature as you have just become proficient. I think she just kind of takes a little bit like as if she was very stoned, just staring up into space and like, wow, it's just like so beautiful. Like, can you believe how beautiful it is? It's just, oh, wow. <laughs> That's the next five minutes. Yeah, got it. Uh, Valda, what are you doing? Um, I don't know if Valda would be interested in eating a dead god or not. So I'm not quite sure. Okay. Uh, can you actually roll me another history check? Four. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, as you watch them eat the dead god, you completely forget the last thing that you were going to tell them about it. Oh, God. Something terrible <laughs> is going to happen to us at some point. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Should I take another bite? Just to be safe? <laughs> that's up to you. No, I guess that's I'm. Between, that's between you and Gond. I mean, I'm definitely gonna. I'm gonna pocket a piece for later because this has been. Uh, this has been an experience, and honestly, for someone like Denis, who does do quite a lot of drugs and also imbibes quite a lot of just substances generally, it's kind of fun. So she's she's gonna she's gonna pocket a little bit, maybe for like before bed, you know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, when you just want to like like get a little high before bed, so you can like calm down and go to sleep. <laughs> It's her little private stash of God bod. Maybe that's exactly what happens, but I guess you're going to have to find out in the future. Um, Do I have a feeling as to if it was like, I feel like there was something important I wanted to say, but I can't remember it. Or there was just more information that I had to say. Uh, the former. Okay. Like it's just um, on the tip of your tongue, but it's not there. Yeah. It was probably important. Yeah, y'all, I don't I don't know if I'd eat any more of the god bod. Um, I feel like there's something that happens with it. So maybe like hold off. 
honestly, I am so enraptured with the stars at this point in time that I don't even think I hear that. I am just like, wow. That's a very Denis move. It's so big and bright, and it's just like, we're so small. And like, why am I even here? Why are we here? She's just having having a moment. And then I turn to her and I'm like, we're here to get rid of the schmuffy puff. Yeah. But like, who even cares about a schmuffy puff? Look at the universe. <laughs> Very existential. Got it. Mag, what do you do whenever Denise says that? I only licked my fingers. I did not lick it. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, that is correct. But you are standing there when Denise says, why are we here? And what, like, why are we care about the schmuffy puff? Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> Mag understands the healing power of psychedelics uh, in the face of PTSD. And so uh, she is just going to say, yes, sweetie, the stars are so beautiful. Everything is so wonderful and everyone loves you. And she like takes her, takes Diddy's hand while tripping. Yeah. And it's just like, all right, Margaret, lead the way to your chef. What's their name? Uh, do you know where they are on the God Bond? <laughs> oh, also, uh, my my name here on this uh, on this planet, since we got, we should probably do fake names, uh, is Morbeck Smugbuster, and I say it in perfect Dwarvish. <laughs> As she is holding my hand, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna do the thing that people do when they're on Molly, and I'm just kind of like petting her hair. And I go, and I'm at one with the universe. And oh. that is, that's my name. <laughs> I liked Denis better, but that's just me. I believe his name was Randy. Well, as sure as my name is Morbeck, let's go find Randy. Let's go! And the four of you march off with Felix hopping behind as we depart for this for this evening, zooming out back into the Astral Sea. On Gond. Nox. There's a reason its name is Nox. That's what that's what Vault is forgetting. <laughs> oh, oh. What? Ooh. Ooh. What am I forgetting? There's a reason it's called Nox. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I, may have, I may have briefly went over it, but that's for y'all to replay. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, thank right. you, everybody, for tonight. Uh, I really appreciate all of your attention and RP. It was a great session. Uh, if you are not following us, hit that button. If you're not subscribing and liked what you saw, maybe consider that. Uh, we will be doing a lot more systems, a lot more games on this channel in the near future, including a uh, flagship campaign and a handful of small little mini arcs and one shots. Uh, that's kind of who we are and what we do here uh, in case you're just uh, coming in late. And uh, Rachel, where can people find you when you're not uh, slaying space sharks in the astral sea um you can please uh follow me on the tubes uh at i am rachel quirky on all of your social media platforms uh or you could listen to uh one or both of my podcasts uh the infinity podcast or screen snark uh and you can also check out my personal twitch stream every tuesday and wednesday uh, morning, afternoon times. We're playing games. I did some rhinestoning. Who knows what we're going to do over there? It's going to get weird. Uh, please be my internet friend. Please. Yeah, for sure. Please. And please. Erica, where can people find you? Um, I am at Mercury Dice on all of the social needs. Um, and I make shiny click clack math rocks. 
Follow me for beautiful. that. Beautiful. Oh, I was going to try to show them, but they're not going to show them the camera. I have beautiful dice that Erica made. Uh, the ones that I mentioned on Tuesday that I uh, am using for the core campaign that we are doing. I tried to show them on Tuesday. It didn't work. But I did try <laughs> If you go on to my Instagram. Yes, if you go on to Erica's Instagram, you can see all the dice. <laughs> um, oh, also a reminder that if you click the link tree below, we do have a merch store and there are really fucking cool hats. And I feel like we never plug the hats. So yes. I'm doing that now. And there's also going to be some like really cool t-shirt designs coming in soon. Um, I haven't really talked to Katie and Ben about it yet, but I'm doing it. That's fine. <laughs> um, they might be like a limited run, but they're specifically going to be for the chaos ladies. Uh, I've made a couple designs at this point. Uh, some of which you have seen, including this awesome brand new one that I just unveiled tonight. Um, that's going to be really cool. Uh, check it out. It's going to be printed on probably some shirts, maybe some hoodies. If y'all have anything specific that you want to wear, put it in the chat right now and we'll check it out in the next like minute and a half or two. Um, that includes players. You can also just shout out things you want to oh, wear. Oh, <laughs> I was typing crop hoodie in the chat. I love that crop. I love that crop, crop hoodie. Is... Shirt. Are you kidding me? Oh, so good. Ugh, I, I will see what thinking. I can whip up tonight. And uh... hoodie, t-shirt, joggers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear it all. <laughs> Blade wants a tank top with Rachel's face on it. As long as Rachel gives permission, we could make it happen, I suppose. <laughs> we should have a picture of Rachel's face that just says the tubes. <laughs> the tubes. <laughs> the tubes. The like tubes. I'm holding like a rainbow, but it's just a bunch of tubes. Yes. I love Rachel, that. Rachel, we will talk after this. I, I, uh, I, that. <laughs> I may or may not already have a tubes design that we could like throw your face on top of. <laughs> I think we should. I think I think that that's the I think that's the move, and I imagine it would be like our best selling piece as well. Right, of course. Everyone fucking loves you, Rachel, because you're amazing. <laughs> it's the truth. I just I just fall in love with my characters and then go out and play this. I fell in love with them. From beyond the table. Are you talking like a half shirt? I'm all about the half shirt. Ooh. <laughs> uh I'll see if that's a even like a possibility on our store. Uh you know, see depending on what items they have. That might be a thing. We'll see. Uh, Katie, where can people find you if they want to talk to you besides here? I mean, all of my shit is down below. If you click on Katie's shiz, you can find my Twitter and my Instagram. And I don't know what else I have there. Whatever social medias I am on, uh, you can find the link below the screen. I had something else to say, and now I don't remember what it was. Fuck. Um, Zeki, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Zectown on the internet. And honestly, I'm here a lot of days of the week. And when I'm not, I'm at a, a Tale of D20's Twitch channel doing stuff over there with some of these lovely faces as well. So that's where you can find us. We appreciate you coming again and spending time with us. Uh, does anybody have anybody they want to go raid? That's what I, I was going to ask. Don't. But, Anyone that we should raid? Otherwise, I will just pick a random channel that is recommended um, on the side. I mean, my friend April Anonymous is streaming right now. Um, Spell that for me. Oh, yeah. Every, every last time. time. Last oh, time, no. <laughs> the spelling was uh, very so different than what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> every time I'm like, well, one of my, one of my many talented friends is also on on stream these humans much cooler than i am just hanging out cool. uh no, this is a theater friend from college sweet oh, cool. um very quickly uh sunday ben and i will be guesting on advanced dungeons and intermediate dragons uh and the characters that we have created are I, I feel like I need to apologize for that whole cast in advance. So do with that information oh, no. what you will. Um, but yeah, they're very out there characters. I'm very excited. Um, and then next week's schedule will be posted next week. But on Monday, I'm going to plug this now uh, from Beyond the Table, a.k.a. Pablo, is going to be uh, DMing a labyrinth-style dungeon crawler E one-shot for Ben, Zeki, and I um and i am very much looking forward to it yeah we're super jacked up we got a, like a little sneak preview for y'all and 
it was amazing. So super excited for that as well. So come check that out. All right. And let's go pop over to Rachel's college friend. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody.